After a 33-year-old man fell to his death this week while touring the Grand Canyon, walking across the viewing platform. The Grand Canyon, a stunning geological marvel, perennially attracts millions of awestruck visitors. Yet, beyond its breathtaking vastness, lies a realm of discoveries that promises to astonish even the most discerning explorers. Amidst the belief that this natural wonder has revealed all of its secrets, the Grand Canyon continues to bestow remarkable revelations upon those who seek to unravel its mysteries. In this meticulous exploration, we embark on a journey that unveils 20 scientifically astounding discoveries within the Grand Canyon. These findings, some genuinely unsettling in their implications, challenge conventional wisdom and reshape our understanding of this iconic landmark. Number 20. The Grand Canyon Faults the Grand Canyon is not just a breathtaking natural wonder, but also a living geological laboratory. One of its many scientific fascinations lies in its intricate network of geological faults. These fractures in the Earth's crust have been the focus of extensive research for their seismic activity potential and associated geological phenomena. Data gathered from seismometers strategically placed in the Grand Canyon region have shed light on the tectonic forces at play. While the canyon itself may appear static to the human eye, the earth beneath it is far from still. Over the past century, scientists have recorded numerous small-scale earthquakes and measured ground motion along these faults. These data have allowed geologists to better understand the dynamic nature of the region, including the potential for larger seismic events. Fault research in the Grand Canyon has broader implications for understanding the geological processes that shape landscapes worldwide. By examining the patterns and behaviors of these faults, scientists gain insights into the movement of the Earth's crust, which can be applied to regions far beyond the canyon's walls. Moreover, the study of faults in the Grand Canyon has practical implications for assessing seismic hazards and ensuring the safety of communities in the vicinity. It underscores the importance of ongoing monitoring and research to mitigate potential risks associated with geological fault lines, contributing to the safety and resilience of communities in the southwestern United States. Number 19. The Grand Canyon's Mysterious UFO Sightings Rum hours about sightings of UFOs near the Grand Canyon have intrigued many over the years. While it's natural to be curious, it's important to approach these reports with skepticism. Most UFO sightings can be explained by common things like aeroplanes, weather balloons, or natural phenomena. Nevertheless, some incidents near the Grand Canyon remain enigmatic. In 2010, a commercial pilot claimed to have seen a cylindrical metallic object flying at around 40,000 feet above the canyon. This object moved swiftly and remained visible for several minutes before disappearing. During the 1950s and 1960s, there were more reports of unusual lights and objects in the sky adding to the mystery. However, it's challenging to determine the true nature of these encounters or whether they had extraterrestrial origins due to the lack of concrete evidence. On June 27, 2020, a UFO was captured on camera flying over the southern rim of the Grand Canyon. Self-proclaimed UFO expert Scott Waring believes that Arizona is a prime location for UFO sightings. According to him, anyone who watches the video of this incident will be genuinely surprised. The Grand Canyon remains a place filled with information and mysteries, including these intriguing but unverified UFO encounters. Number 18. The Cambrian Explosion The presence of well-preserved fossils from the Cambrian period offers a captivating window into the explosion of life that occurred over half a billion years ago. This event, known as the Cambrian Explosion, marked an unprecedented surge in biological diversity, and the Grand Canyon's fossil record is a testament to this evolutionary marvel. Empirical data extracted from the Grand Canyon's rock layers provide crucial insights into this pivotal moment in Earth's history. Fossils of trilobites, brachiopods, and other ancient marine creatures have been meticulously cataloged and studied by paleontologists. These findings reveal the rapid evolution of complex organisms during the Cambrian period, challenging earlier views of life's gradual progression. One remarkable example is the discovery of the Burgess Shale-type fauna in the Grand Canyon, 
similar to the iconic Burgess Shale in Canada. These exquisitely preserved fossils showcase bizarre and intricate life forms that thrived during this period, adding to our understanding of the extraordinary diversity of Cambrian life. Additionally, the Grand Canyon's fossil record aids in elucidating the environmental conditions of the time. It provides empirical data on ancient ecosystems, shedding light on the complex interplay between species, climate, and geological processes during the Cambrian explosion. Number 17. The Continuous Pursuit of Understanding the Great Unconformity The Grand Canyon can be divided into three layers. The deepest layer contains the oldest rocks known to humanity. The middle layer consists of sedimentary rocks without fossils, while the top layer contains Paleozoic layers with fossil evidence of life. Between these layers, there is a gap where we should find rocks from a specific time period called the Neoproterozoic Era. Strangely, this gap lacks rocks from that era. Scientists have been puzzled by this phenomenon for quite some time. This intriguing phenomenon is referred to as the Great Unconformity, representing a gap in geological evidence from 1 billion to 538.8 million years ago in the Grand Canyon. John Wesley Powell first noticed this gap in 1869 while exploring the Colorado River. However, it took years for the scientific community to acknowledge his discovery. Today, scientists continue to grapple with the mystery of the missing rock layers in the Grand Canyon. They employ advanced techniques and innovative methods in their quest to uncover the secrets of this gap. It's akin to a high-stakes game of Where's Waldo with nature. Despite the challenges, researchers remain determined to solve this puzzle, eager to unveil the hidden surprises that the Grand Canyon may still hold. Number 16. Vishnu Schist The Vishnu Schist, an extraordinary rock formation found in the Grand Canyon, offers a captivating window into our planet's ancient history. Dating back over an astonishing 1.7 billion years, this metamorphic rock formation stands as one of the most ancient exposed rock surfaces on Earth. The Vishnu Schist is not merely a geological relic, it is an empirical testament to the incredible forces of time, pressure, and transformation that our planet has endured. Geologists have meticulously studied the Vishnu Schist to unravel its secrets. Its composition of mica, feldspar, and quartz hints at a turbulent past. The layering, folding, and foliation seen in the schist bear witness to immense geological pressures, shedding light on the tectonic upheavals that shaped our planet's early continents. Data derived from radiometric dating methods, such as uranium lead dating, has established the Vishnu Schist's antiquity with remarkable precision. Analyzing the isotopic ratios of uranium and lead within the rock provides a reliable chronology, reaffirming its age and contributing to our broader understanding of Earth's timeline. Additionally, Vishnu Schist's presence within the Grand Canyon offers a unique opportunity for comparative geological analysis. Scientists can contrast it with neighboring rock layers, investigating how different strata formed and interacted over geological epochs. Number 15. Uncovering Egypt's Footprint New information suggests that Egyptians may have been in the Grand Canyon, which might seem unlikely at first. Egypt is in Africa and the Grand Canyon is in North America, separated by about 12,000 kilometers, much of which is the Atlantic Ocean. Nevertheless, there is strong evidence supporting the idea that ancient Egyptians explored the Grand Canyon. Joe Rogan recently had Hotep Jesus on his show, where they discussed research by the Smithsonian Institution about ancient Egyptians in the Grand Canyon. This evidence shows that North African travelers from ancient times somehow made their way to this massive North American canyon. The story goes back to a 1909 publication by the Smithsonian, which first piqued interest in this topic. Interestingly, hidden in a small part of the Grand Canyon are pyramids, caves with ancient writings, and objects that remind us of Egypt's history. This information has been kept secret by authorities for nearly a century. The airspace above this area is restricted, adding to the mystery. The land around the pyramid and cave sites is legally off-limits and dangerous to access, making confirmed reports rare. Some accounts from sources like the Smithsonian have been altered or withdrawn, casting doubt on their accuracy. Number 14. Kincaid's Cave and the Smithsonian Expedition 
Within the Grand Canyon lies Kincaid's Cave, named after its original explorer, G.E. Kincaid, an archaeologist and former Marine who later worked for the Smithsonian Institute. S.A. Jordan, dispatched by the Smithsonian, conducted an investigative mission in the Grand Canyon to explore data gathered by John Wesley Powell. Situated on a cliff wall 400 feet above the Colorado River, this cave is believed to be a human-made structure dating back about 3,000 years. It stretches over 500 feet and contains various cross tunnels leading to spacious chambers. This cavern represents the deepest part of the Grand Canyon's underground tunnel cities, likely formed due to the Colorado River's erosion, which has caused it to descend around 300 feet since its construction. Kincaid's cave has yielded numerous Egyptian artifacts, including a unique gold artifact depicting Egyptian King Cayenne holding lotus flowers, symbols from Egypt. This discovery was made in the cave's initial tunnel, aligned with shrines in the Valley of the Kings. It suggests a connection between King Cayenne and ancient Egypt, further supported by an Egyptian gold tablet recounting the tale of King Zamnat and his descendant King Cayenne spanning from Aslan to the Grand Canyon. Some of the valuable items from Kincaid's Cave and Powell's Cave are on display at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. However, not all relics from the caves have been documented or publicly exhibited for various reasons. Number 13. The Pell Hamblin Expedition John Wesley Pell, the first American explorer archaeologist to thoroughly study the Grand Canyon, conducted this expedition with his native guide, Jacob Vernon Hamblin. Hamblin took on the role of Pell's late colleague. Pell, with prior experience in the United States Department of the Interior and a prestigious position in the Smithsonian Institution's Bureau of Ethnology, led the journey in 1869. Their mission was to explore the Grand Canyon meticulously by traveling down the Green River. Pell became the first to provide valuable archaeological insights about the indigenous people of the Grand Canyon and their history to the U.S. government. Pell's Cave, one of his notable discoveries, was found during this exploration. According to Pell's written account, the canyon had many man-made caves. The group ventured deep into the canyon, uncovering paths carved into cliffs, exploring various rock formations, and even spotting ancient Egyptian inscriptions on cave walls. Inside the cave, they found a significant artifact area and promptly reported to the Smithsonian. As they continued exploring the canyon, they discovered more hidden chambers resembling Egyptian tunnels, raising speculation that over 50,000 Egyptians might have once inhabited the area. Number 12. From Saqqara to the Grand Canyon Pell and his team uncovered a significant find in Pell's cave, revealing a shrine dedicated to King Smenchikari, the son of King Akhenaten, who reigned from 1336 BC in Saqqara, Egypt. Regrettably, his rule was brief, ending with his demise during a journey to Saqqara. The inscriptions discovered by the team indicate that ancient Egyptians expanded their presence to the Grand Canyon, introducing their intricate writing system. Among their discoveries was an educational tablet for teaching Egyptian children to read and write. Notably, they also stumbled upon sarcophagi in the Grand Canyon, later stored at the Smithsonian Institute. One sarcophagus was opened to confirm the presence of mummies. Additionally, the team encountered a folded rock formation containing statues. The Grand Canyon is distinctive for naming its landmarks after Egyptian pharaohs, essentially forming an ancient pyramid complex. It aligns with the same celestial bodies as the Giza pyramids, the Orion and Pleiades constellations. The link between the Grand Canyon and ancient Egypt lies in sandblasting. Ancient Egyptians utilized Grand Canyon sand to construct their monumental structures, efficiently moving massive stone blocks. Researchers unravel led the mystery of stone transportation by delving into history. A painting from Djibouti Hotep's tomb, depicting someone using a sledge on wet sand, inspired a laboratory experiment led by physics professor Daniel Bonnet. Adding water to the sand improved its properties for moving objects, likely reducing the need for as many laborers. Number 11. The Mogul on Monster One of the most intriguing tales in Grand Canyon lore is the story of the Mogolon Monster, also known as Arizona's Bigfoot. These creatures are believed to live in the dense forests of the Mogollon Rim, 
a high cliff that stretches from northern Yavapai County to New Mexico. In 1903, near the Grand Canyon, adventurer Ingvald Walter Stevens claimed to have seen a large, hairy creature resembling Bigfoot or Sasquatch, known for mysterious animal stories. Stevens described it as strong, fast, and adept at navigating the canyon's wild woods. Another believer, Don Davis, had an encounter in the 1940s near Payson when he was with Boy Scouts. Davis observed a massive, hairy creature with an unusual face and head. People described this creature as over seven feet tall, walking upright, with long, fur-covered claws and a foul odor resembling rotting fish or meat. It can mimic animal sounds and emit weird cries, resembling a distressed woman. However, it's important to note that most scientists remain skeptical, suggesting that these sightings could be errors or tall grizzly bears on their hind legs. The existence of this creature remains unproven. If you ever hear a loud scream or encounter large footprints near the Mogollon Rim, it's wise to leave the area swiftly without looking back, as the elusive wild man of the rock might be lurking in the woods, ready to appear unexpectedly. Number 10. The Lost World of Grand Canyon's Ice Age Caves Hidden within the towering cliffs of the Grand Canyon are concealed caves that safeguard an ancient treasure trove of biological remains. These underground chambers preserve the fossilized remnants of plants and animals, providing profound insights into the region's distant past. During the Ice Age, these caves served as homes for a diverse range of creatures, from small burrowing species to larger, freely roaming ones. The dry Arizona climate played a crucial role in preserving these ancient animal bones. This remarkable preservation has allowed scientists to learn about events that occurred some 40,000 years ago. Exploration of these ancient relics began in 1936 with the discovery of Rampart Cave, nestled deep within the canyon at an elevation of 534 meters. Extensive research revealed clusters of excrement on the cave floor, attributed to a massive nine-foot sloth weighing about 500 pounds, which had been deceased for over 10,000 years. Radiocarbon dating was used to determine their age, ranging from 11,000 to 40,000 years. The fecal matter contained plant residues, shedding light on the animals' diets and the local flora. Harrington Mountain goat skulls were also found in the cave, suggesting their presence around 19,000 years ago, alongside the Shasha ground sloth. These mountain goats resembled their modern counterparts. Additionally, well-preserved mummified bats, similar to condors, were unearthed, enabling biologist Steve Emsley to conduct a comprehensive study of their skin, bones, and diet, providing valuable insights into the extinction of large prehistoric animals. These discoveries interconnect various aspects of the cave's ecosystem. Number 9. Will the Mighty Colorado River Run Dry? The Colorado River, starting in the Rocky Mountains of the southwestern United States, stretches about 1,450 miles. As it flows through deep canyons and rugged terrain, it creates beautiful landscapes. One famous area it shapes is the Grand Canyon, where it has created a stunning natural wonder. The river travels through deserts, waterfalls, and canyons, passing through wetlands and a large delta in Mexico before reaching the Gulf of California. In the Grand Canyon, it provides opportunities for kayaking, canoeing, and tours. Unfortunately, scientists have identified a looming problem. The river could run dry if we don't take action soon. Environmentalists say this issue has been building up for decades and has become critical because major reservoirs on the river have dangerously low water levels. Western states built dams and changed the flow of water to support growing cities like Los Angeles, Phoenix, and San Diego. This affects the flow of the Colorado River. One dam, the Glen Canyon Dam, is 50 years old and created Lake Powell. Originally built for power, the water in the lake is now too low. Without intervention, the dam could block water and harm California, Arizona, Mexico, and Nevada. To solve this, environmental groups want leaders to upgrade the dam's infrastructure to ensure enough water can flow into the Colorado River. Number 8. Grand Canyon's Uranium Dilemma The Grand Canyon holds deep spiritual and cultural significance for 11 Native American tribes. 
Despite its importance, it is not adequately protected from substances like uranium. In fact, there are many uranium mines and claims outside the park boundaries, posing a serious threat to its preservation. Uranium is found in the rocks of the Southwest, especially in the Grand Canyon area, mainly in geological formations called breccia pipes. Miners have been drawn to these areas since the 1870s. Uranium mining near Grand Canyon National Park began in the 1950s, with the Orphan Mine operating just two miles from Grand Canyon Village. There have been at least eight uranium mines near the park, with the Canyon Mine, now known as the Pinion Plain Mine, being the highest grade uranium mine in development in the United States. This mining activity raises concerns, especially for the springs within the Grand Canyon, which are vital for the Havasupai tribe, residing deep within the canyon. They depend on these springs for their needs and cultural practices. While there was a temporary ban on uranium mining in 2012 for about a million acres of public lands around the Grand Canyon, the persistence of nearly 600 active mining claims despite attempts to permanently stop new operations shows that challenges remain. Number 7. Prehistoric Life Forms Found in the Grand Canyon the exploration of a new life form began when a large rock fell from a tall cliff, revealing unique markings. Alan Krill, a geology expert, was with his student at the Grand Canyon National Park when this happened. While hiking the Bright Angel Trail, Krill discovered a rock with strange marks that looked like footprints. He took careful photos of these prints and shared them with his colleague, Stephen Rowland, who specializes in studying ancient animal remains and works in a Las Vegas institution. After analyzing the photos, Roland identified these marks as ancient footprints, dating back about 313 million years, making them the oldest evidence of vertebrate animals in the Grand Canyon. These footprints were found in a rock from a very ancient sandy area, which explains their exceptional preservation. Further examination by Roland revealed patterns on the rock showing two reptilian creatures moving diagonally. One of these creatures was about a foot long and moved sideways, using both its front and hind limbs. While it's unclear if these tracks belong to two different creatures or one creature at different times, Roland noted that this type of movement was common among four-legged animals. This discovery provides insight into the existence of crawling animals in a distant era, which was previously unknown. However, there are scientific debates about the track's origins and the age of the rock. Mark Niebel, a manager at the Grand Canyon, discussed the challenges of identifying the creature responsible for these ancient tracks. Niebel praised Krill for discovering these ancient marks on an ordinary rock that had gone unnoticed by many people. Number 6. Havasupai Tribe The Havasupai people, also known as the Havasubaha, primarily reside in Supai, a tributary canyon within the Grand Canyon. This indigenous community represents one of the smallest American Indian nations in the United States. They are unique in that they are the only community where mail is transported and delivered by mule. Their influence stretches from Bill Williams Mountain in the south to the Little Colorado River in the east. The Havasupai's homes vary depending on the season. During autumn and winter, they live on the Colorado Plateau at the canyon's rim, engaging in hunting and gathering for sustenance. In spring and summer, they cultivate the Tonto platform, including Indian garden and other fertile areas, growing crops like corn, beans, squash, melons, and pumpkins. They periodically return to the plateau for hunting and regularly inspect their farms to guard against drought and pests. They build structures alongside their fields to protect their crops and live in round, thatched shelters made from willow and brush, with an east-facing sleeping arrangement to avoid nightmares. The Havasupai people have lived in the canyon for centuries and had their first encounter with European explorers in 1776, when Spanish priest Francisco Garces visited Havasu Canyon. Later, in the late 1880s, Euro-American settlers intruded as they explored paths used by Puebloans, Havasupai, and ancient Hopi, leading to the discovery of ancient irrigation ditches and farms known as the Indian Garden. Their relationship with the land faced challenges, including displacement when President Theodore Roosevelt visited in 1903. However, in 1975, President Gerald Ford returned some canyon rimland to the Havasupai, and since then, 
they have adapted to a way of life that includes tourism, farming, and employment to sustain themselves. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. It's time for today's topic. What scientists just found in the forbidden area of the Grand Canyon shocks the world. You see, scientists have stumbled upon an astonishing secret hidden deep within the forbidden recesses of the Grand Canyon, a discovery that rivals the majestic artistry of ancient Egypt. Imagine standing before a remarkable sculpture meticulously carved into the very rock of the Grand Canyon, reminiscent of the captivating artistry of the Egyptians. But here's the mystery. What civilization possessed such incredible skills to carve such a masterpiece in this remote and hidden corner of the world? How has this astonishing piece of art remained concealed for centuries, shrouded in the heart of the Grand Canyon's secrets? And what other wonders might still be hidden in this majestic natural wonder? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Number 5. The Tucson Ruins The Grand Canyon area has a long history with different creatures and people. One group, the ancestral Puebloans, like the Hopi and Zuni tribes today, had a deep connection here. They built the Tusayan settlement near the Grand Canyon's south edge in 1185 AD. This settlement had fields, houses, and religious buildings. It shows that people lived here for a very long time, about 800 years ago. The Tusayan ruins had a central plaza with storage rooms, houses, and kivas used for ceremonies. Their houses were simple made from rocks and wood, and they had rooms for living and storing food. The limestone cliffs made it hard to dig deep. In the 1930s, archaeologists dug in the area and built a museum called the Tusayan Museum. It explains what they found and tells the history of the tribes living in the Grand Canyon area, like the Havasupai, Hopi, Hualapai, Navajo, and Paiute. They've been connected to this place for a very long time, as shown by figurines dating back 2,000 to 4,000 years, representing the Grand Canyon's importance to Native American cultures. Number 4. Numerous Animal Species Exploring hidden stories and creatures within the Grand Canyon is thrilling. Amid these rocky layers, signs of early human existence have intrigued scientists. The established timeline for human presence on Earth has been widely accepted, However, recent findings have shifted our perspective. These findings include ancient footprints found in White Sands Natural Park, challenging previous notions of when humans arrived in the Americas. This discovery holds profound implications, extending beyond historical documentation. Some experts propose that these footprints could signify human contact with the New World as early as 23,000 years ago, a significant shift from the conventional estimate of 13,000 years. While the White Sands discovery excites researchers, it doesn't definitively settle the question of when humans first arrived in the Americas. Nonetheless, it injects fresh vigor into the ongoing debate. Renowned archaeologist Cyprian Adeline has dubbed this discovery the Holy Grail of Anthropology. His research in Mexico's Chiquihuit Cave aligns with the idea that humans may have inhabited North America as far back as 30,000 years ago. Number 3 the terrifying formation of the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is a vast wonder, stretching over 277 miles long and expanding to widths of up to 18 miles, with a depth of more than a mile. Its enormous size and the intricate layers of rock on its walls offer a unique geological record, spanning billions of years of Earth's history. The story of the Grand Canyon's origins begins around 70 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period, when the area was relatively flat. Over time, tectonic movements and the rising of the Colorado Plateau altered the landscape, setting the stage for the canyon's formation. About six million years ago, the Colorado River, which now flows through the region, began carving through the rising plateau. As it cut through layers of rock, it unveiled a diverse range of geological formations, showcasing millions of years of Earth's history. While the Colorado River played a pivotal role, other factors also contributed. Changes in climate over vast periods influenced erosion rates, with colder times seeing the impact of glaciers and freeze-thaw cycles, while warmer phases led to increased water flow. Resilient rock layers like sturdy sandstones impeded erosion in certain areas, resulting in the formation of impressive cliffs and steep slopes. Number 2. The Case of Disappearing Bodies 
In 2021, a significant event occurred at the Grand Canyon. A lifeless body, identified as Gabor Berchi Tong Sanyi, a 45-year-old Hungarian man, was found about 430 feet below the Yavapai Point Rim. He had been reported missing by his family to the Las Vegas police, leading to a swift response from law enforcement. His vehicle and belongings were discovered at the park's visitor's center. As the investigation continued, his remains were found 131 meters below the canyon rim, a surprising and distressing discovery. The story took another unusual turn when human remains belonging to Scott Walsh, last seen in 2015 at the south rim of the park, were found near Tong San Yi's body, nearly five kilometers away and hidden from easy view. The mystery deepened as it was revealed that there was a hidden gap between the rock layers in the Grand Canyon, a space that had concealed secrets for millennia. Recent discoveries have started to uncover these enigmatic secrets and shed light on the unexpected encounters with these previously unknown remains, leaving many puzzled by the unusual circumstances. Number 1. Grand Canyon Luxury Suite During the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1961, President John F. Kennedy took a significant step amidst the looming threat of bombings. Fearing potential destruction on American soil, he envisioned a sanctuary to protect his fellow citizens. The Grand Canyon emerged as the perfect refuge, and the president commissioned the construction of luxury cave suites for over 2,000 people, designed to sustain them for a month. Although the crisis passed without catastrophe, the legacy of these subterranean sanctuaries endures. Positioned 220 feet below the surface, these caves have become a unique underground marvel, renowned as the world's most serene, mysterious, and ancient lodging. They bear witness to over 65 million years of geological history, with well-preserved walls and caverns. Surprisingly, the emergency rations stored here remain fresh and viable, thanks to the arid climate of the Grand Canyon. The suite offers modern amenities, including televisions, record players, comfortable bedding, and a library for relaxation. Remarkably, it has running water achieved through innovative engineering in this dry, underground environment. Its extreme dryness prevents any wildlife from inhabiting the space. Which of these remarkable findings do you consider the most astounding? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.